So obviously we're going to talk about what you've all been reading all over the news this weekend, but I don't want it to distract from how fire last week's report was. If you didn't see the video, this week was probably hell for you. If you saw the video last week, this week was probably absolute freaking money for you. I mean, that was even above the norm when it comes to win rates for trades this week, 90% win rate. And I'm here to tell you that the win streak will continue. There's a lot of noise out there, but I'm here to bring the calm. I was down, but now I'm uh, yeah. It's all got to say no love. Yeah. Iran has done some missile strikes on Israel, but to make this as short and sweet as possible, I think it's fair enough to say that most of this appears to have been performative. There wasn't a lot of damage on Israel, and that was the number one thing we were talking about even on the Discord over the weekend. We had some calls within the community, some live updates, and even if we look at the futures market, we can see that a lot of this has actually been bought up. We're actually up rather than gapping down on the futures market, which means the market has showing that it's very relieved. Now, I know in the moment it was very scary. I was even getting some calls from people, uh, some from fund managers that were telling me that this looks awful. They're looking for a black swan event around the corner. And honestly, we can't rule that out yet. But F, for now, what we see, the facts that we have now, what seems to be happening currently is not turning into that yet. Remember, that's all I can do. I spent years unprofitable, angry at the screen, angry at the world because I wanted to be right and I wasn't right. And where, 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 where? Who cares? No one cares. Make money, that's all that matters. You wanna make money, then you need to have a plan and react to the plan, okay? We look for setups and react to those setups. We prepared for all things that could occur, right? I'm gonna watch my reports and see the way I do this. I have setups. Ups, and I say, if this, then this. That's what we do. We are not crystal balls. Do not try to be the crystal balls. Do not try to be the smartest guy in the room. Be the guy who is the most nimble. Now, if you follow me, I'm a trader, one of the best traders, but I still invest. And over the weekend, there was a moment where I was like, uh-oh, my investment portfolio is not going to weather this well. We do actually have a black swan event. On Friday, I actually closed a lot of my VIX calls and I was looking at my positioning at about 15% in bonds and I'm actually looking to bring up that allocation. Now, the chart here for TLT does not look so hot. And in fact, on the weekly, we can see that we're actually printing to the downside here, which means that this might wanna come all the way down and test a double bottom, especially if we don't get any Fed rate cuts, which we might not. If this settles down, it all, is all performative, and there's no other major things that happen this year, which keep in mind that, you know, that could happen, okay? The other side of that is, hey, this thing that just happened this weekend is not from just this weekend. It's actually been building on itself for four years ever since COVID, right? If you think about the greater geopolitics, and I'm not gonna break all of it down, but if you're aware of that, you realize the trend that's happening, okay? The world is becoming slowly more and more and more dangerous, okay? But these things take time. So on a longer time horizon in my long-term portfolio where I don't time time, try and time things like I do in my trade portfolio, I probably want a larger bond allocation or maybe even some bond futures where I probably buy until the end of the year and get some allocation there for heavy leverage into a portfolio that is mostly equities, mostly stocks. I probably won't even looking at something like this. Now, the way this charting is, it shows me that, hey, you know, the market thinks that there's gonna be no hikes. It doesn't seem to be concerned about uh, the what just happened over the past weekend and we could see this retraced out of the bottom now i think this is, means that i'm going to get a further allocation here maybe bring that up to about 25 percent of my portfolio start to build up some safety there now i still want to keep my equities that's the thing i don't really want to sell my stock positions because we're still in election year because this still looks overall bullish to me because the market's still being sturdy even to news like this now i'm gonna talk about some trades that i'm looking for this upcoming week in just a moment but just to recap the idea with the allocation location into bonds is that going to slowly buy on the way down look for political turmoil to cause a flight to safety or look for the fed to actually cut rates and i have about a one to two year time horizon on that bond position 
I'll look for rate cuts in 2025 for the bull case, and I'll look for them probably by June in the bear case. Either way, I like this position for either case. And since that captures my whole basket of ideas, I like that much more than buying something like fixed calls or buying VIX outright or buying some leveraged bear ETF or something like that. I think bonds are just a safer play because either if bullish or bearish, I think we eventually win on that positioning. So now let's talk about what we're looking for this upcoming week. Now I know a lot of traders who tried to come in on Friday and buy calls and you can do that if you are sized appropriately for risk. However, I think it's important to teach, especially new traders that they need to look for things that have good risk to reward. Okay. There's not a lot of great risk to reward to try and come in and time this, this key level for the direction. Okay, you know, you come down to this 50 day moving average and we can actually get this to balance out here. You can see, you know, you can get big bounces off of this 50 day, but you can also see these deep plunges down to this 100 day moving average. And right now that's what you're basically looking for. You got this big move that you can still get to the downside, especially on the bear case. Your bear case is all the way down at 480 for spy. All right. And so your bull case is also pretty great. You got a lot of room there. So there's really no need to try and come in and try to time this coming into Friday in my trade account. I let everyone know I was going to sit on a lot of cash. I'm not trying to time a direction. And in fact, I think getting into this week, I'm likely going to have a more biased positioning as we see this parallel channel development as well. Um, I'd probably look to buy some puts if we can get below this 508.41 and probably look for 506 or 504 here uh, as an exit on that, maybe even play the trend further to the downside. But I think that's going to be my first trigger that I'm looking for. The other thing that I think you should keep an eye out is on these uh, banks. Banks are super weak this past week. And the big thing with JP Morgan, uh, you know, we had all that turmoil in 2023 with the, you know, the fake banking crisis, I guess you could call it, because nothing really dramatic happened since the Fed came and saved the day. But a lot of those smaller banks blowing up should be better for the big banks. So when you see the big banks like JP Morgan, that should be the big winners because they got to soak up all this capital from these small banks that it imploded excuse me it should cause some concern so i think kre is an interesting short position um i've actually already been short and those are starting to play out some i had some puts all the way for june just a very small position on the likelihood that you know if there's no rate cuts it's going to be horrible for these bonds because they're sitting on these big losses and they're kind of praying for rate cuts at this point now they have another year of buffer though because those that loan program that ended in March still goes for another year. So it's not until March of 2025 that we're looking for that weakness to be truly exposed for the wound to truly uh, reach the air. Right now you still have the bandaid on it. And so I'm not expecting for like a big collapse here. However, this weakness is definitely showing if you see the big guys bleeding, all right? And if we look at JP Morgan, especially on this daily chart, we've just broken to the downside on the TTM. Our RSI is at 32, not oversold yet, definitely weak. We can see that we are an oversold RSI for the one hour, which usually means that this will print a bit lower as this tries to improve a bit, consolidate. And so what I'm looking for here is basically going to be a break of these pre-market lows that we're seeing if we get below that i'll look for maybe 176 as an exit for a quick short this week now the one thing i want to include in this report because we didn't talk about it and i feel like we always need to have it on the mind ai does not care about war about rates about inflation about macro geopolitics it doesn't care about any of it the march forward of progress in ai will continue. Now, NVIDIA might suffer because he maintaining 90% of the total addressable market for AI will be a hard task to do. Impossible uh, in my outlook. However, it does not mean that this space is still not going to be ripe with interest and buyers will always step in on any dips that come in, you know, uh, especially for Intel or AMD or, you know, that's a, that's a semi Taiwan semiconductor, SMCI, Dell, even and the cloud side. Okay. All these companies that are in my AI watch list are still going to be on my watch list and I'll still like dips on these. Okay. 
do not forget the opportunities that are laying out in this market especially if we get some black swan of it this is not a sell all and walk away even if we get a big crash okay this is a buy 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 all right this technology in 10 years from now might wipe out the whole market because ai and robots do everything okay this might be your last chance this might be the last decade where you could get rich before they take everything away all right that might be dramatic but it might not remember that